And then overall, just overall, and I look at the exit polls, and um, particularly it was in uh, California, Virginia, North Carolina, around 35, 36 percent of Republicans, people voting in the Republican primary, saying they're not willing to uh, to guarantee that they will support the Republican nominee. You know, that tells me Trump still has a problem consolidating his support. And it's interesting because, you know, the, if let's, let's assume the New York Times poll from the other day was correct. That said that Trump was getting 93 percent of the vote that he had in 2020, yet still people voting, you know, somewhere between 20 and 40 percent of people voting in the Republican primary are not voting for him. So who are those people? I, you know, maybe they're independents, but they're people that are open to voting for Joe Biden. So I feel I'm coming out of this sort of primary season feeling more optimistic about Biden's room to grow and Trump hitting some kind of ceiling. <clears throat> Jen, I have, to, I have to give you the opportunity to say California Senator Alex Padilla, because Kevin DeLeon <laughs> no. ran yes. for it, but oh didn't get gosh. it. Thank yeah. you. Thank yes. you so much, Senator Alex Padilla. <laughs> yes, I knew you would want to he say that, was? and I wanted to give you yes. a chance before we got too yes. far down the road. Oh, that's um, so nice of you. <laughs> Claire, let me ask you about, I mean, the, the points that Jen was just making there in terms of the overall uh, strength of the general election candidates in the presidential tonight and what we're learning about that from these primaries. Hey, listen, I think the thing I take away from today is looking at the margins and deciding which party is really more united. In all the states that voted today, if you look at the results that we know right now, there was only two states where Biden won by less than 70, 70 points. OK, everything else, 80 percent, 82 percent. You know how many states Donald Trump won by more than 70 points? One, Alabama. So there are more people voting against Donald Trump than are even thinking about voting against Joe Biden. And I get the uncommitted is sending a message, and I think it's one that needs to be heard. I think it's important for our party. But really, there is a Republican war going on behind the scenes. It's playing out in primaries all over the country tonight, where big money is going in against MAGA candidates. Uh, they have a problem in the Republican Party in terms of how unified they are. I don't think we have near as far to go. Well, Claire, let me let me just ask you to engage with something that's been happening here on set tonight. We've had some hot, hot criticism of Nikki Haley staying in the race from my beloved friend Alex Wagner, who's oh, sitting God. here with me, um, <laughs> saying, highlighting the, the, the fact that um, Haley's end game is if she thinks she's going to win, that's not going to happen. If she thinks she's doing any damage to Donald Trump, there's no evidence of that. And that she continues to talk smack about Joe Biden in a way that potentially suppresses enthusiasm for, for Biden or, or possibly sort of serves as a sort of heat sink for Democrats who might otherwise put themselves in Biden's camp, but can put themselves sort of uselessly in Haley's camp as long as she's still in the race. What do you think about that? So, listen, she's my beloved Alex Wagner, too. But let me just say, <laughs> I don't think it really matters. Um, I think it matters for Nikki Haley's future. What does she want to do? Does she want to make a bunch of money like Stephanie was talking about, giving speeches and being on corporate boards? Uh, does she see some way forward in this Republican Party? No way. She's done in this Republican Party. It's over. She makes Mike Pence look popular in this Republican po <laughs> Party. So I, I don't think Kaylee has a future in this Republican Party. And I don't think her talking trash about Biden necessarily hurts Biden. But I um, I think she's going to look silly if she comes out and endorses Trump. She's going to look pretty phony. Not good for her political uh, legacy if she comes out after saying the things she said and endorses him. Jen, what do you think along those same lines? I think it doesn't. I mean, I think she's helpful. You know, it, it's just I think it's very helpful for voters, independents, Republicans, Democrats to hear a Republican make criticisms of Donald Trump. And even though she also says bad things about Biden, I think it's worth it. I think that that is a, that's a valuable thing. And if she endorses Trump in the end, she's just going to look as it, it's, it's going to be she's going to look like she has no integrity. I don't really think that's going to hurt Biden. That what we need are effective arguments against Trump. And she's making those. She's making those from somebody from the perspective, uh, from a perspective that people think is a credible Republican perspective yeah. uh, in lots of ways. And you can't manufacture that. That has to come from all an authentic Republican place. Um, Jen Palmieri and Claire McCaskill, our dear friends, uh, great to have you with us tonight. Thank you.